Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal in-depth look at the all-new 2014 Mazda 3 Touring. And this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the Mazda 3. We'll start up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, take an all detailed test drive, and show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. Now this deep metallic cherry red exterior is actually an optional color from the Mazda 3 and is known as Soul Red. Of course, paired with the Touring's upgraded leatherette upholstery with red color accent stitching. Cloth upholstery is standard on lower trim levels, while leather is an option on the Grand Touring trim. And along with that smart key access system, the 3 also has available remote to push button ignition located via the button in the dash. To start, all you have to do is just depress the clutch, wait for the light to illuminate green, and then just hit it to start. The Mazda 3 features electric assist, speed proportional, rack and pinion power steering through a sporty three-spoke leather wrap steering wheel with grips up top, color accent cross stitching, and polished trim towards the bottom two spokes. The upper two spokes carry your faux carbon fiber trim and house your multifunction controls. A heads-up display mounted in the top of the dash is also optional. Mazda has done an excellent job with redesigning the steering setup. With more caster up front, it gives the front wheel drive 3 more rear wheel drive characteristics with a progressive increase in steering effort as the wheel comes off center. It feels more natural and likely represents the most engaging electrically assisted rack in its class. It's precise and accurate, responding with agility and immediacy to the driver's input. This is a car that'll definitely put a smile on your face through the curves. There are two transmissions available for the Mazda 3 depending on if you choose the 3i or 3s trims. The i with the 2 liter engine like we have here can be had with Mazda's excellent close ratio 6 speed manual, or an optional 6 speed automatic with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The s which comes with the larger 2.5 liter engine can only be had with the automatic gearbox. The gear selector is accented in polished trim with the red accent stitching like you would find throughout. This Touring also features a standard backup camera and its 7-inch LCD display. Using the remote wheel in the middle, you can also adjust the color, brightness, and more. This day and age, fuel economy is a paramount, but that doesn't mean a car still can't be fun to drive. With economy gaps shrinking between automatics and manuals, Mazda has still gone out and designed this all-new close-ratio 6-speed manual gearbox. While the new design is slightly more efficient, its main goal is to deliver smoother performance for those who rather switch their own gears and get the most out of their Mazda. Like the MX-5, the close ratio shifts feel great. It's still not quite as tight as the MX-5's gearbox, but keep in mind the particular demographic and the market this car chases it doesn't really need to be. But it still represents the most engaging manual gearbox you can get in this class. There's no excess play, it leads to a tight, precise feel when you're rowing through the different gears. So, we're going to flip on the projector halogen headlamps. Automatic xenon units are also available, as well as fog lights. Hazards are located in the middle of the dash. Automatic driver's side window is standard. And we're going to check out the exterior. The exterior of the vehicle also chime a few times, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. This year, the Mazda 3 enters its third generation in a bold new way. Redesigned from the ground up, the new car promises to not only build upon its sporty demeanor, but to increase comfort and refinement both in design and feel. 
For starters, the new car's wheelbase is longer by 2.4 inches, while overall length decreases by about half an inch. Width grows by 1.6 inches, while height shrinks by just over half an inch. This is largely due to an all-new chassis designed in-house and taking full benefit of Mazda's Skyactiv philosophy. Unlike the previous two generations, which shared a chassis with Volvo and Ford, Mazda's bespoke architecture allowed them more freedom. Freedom to really take advantage of their latest design and technology innovations. Originally debuting as an option for 2012, Mazda's Skyactiv technology has migrated to the 3, larger 6, and the CX-5 crossover. The design consists of purpose-built powertrains, chassis, and bodies that helps maximize economy and performance. Both Skyactiv G power plants for the 3 are unique as they share very little between them and even have different castings and internals for the most part. All in an effort to custom tailor each engine for maximum efficiency based on their own inherent designs. Even the suspension receives a thorough redo for 2014. The front strut geometry now carries 6 degrees of caster, also found in the MX-5 and RX-8, and also the most aggressive found in any front-wheel drive car in its class. Mazda's essentially inserted some driving characteristics of a car with rear-wheel drive in its DNA. Like I touched on earlier, the new car features an all-new unibody structure that features straighter frame rails with 20% greater use of high and ultra-high strength steels, not only for the chassis but the body as well, making it overall 30% stiffer than its predecessor. Also, rigid injected molded foam was used within the structure to help save weight and maintain integrity without having to use heavier steel cross members. The chassis revisions helped with better packaging of the Skyactiv 421 header, which also works to flatten the torque curve and marginally increase peak torque. A few other things such as a lighter windshield, lighter HVAC system, and even lightweight titanium bolts used throughout sum up the various weight savings, or helping keep it down. Like the 6, the 3 carries the latest adaptation of Mazda's Kodo design philosophy which means soul of motion. Its dynamic curves, shorter proportions, and subtle creases give it the appearance of being in motion, again demonstrating that the Mazda 3 is more about personality than convention. The sedan's coefficient of drag is a low .255 with the hatch being slightly higher. Mazda's to carry concept, like I discussed in my review of the new 6, emphasized a long hood, short rear deck, and fender swoops that make the car appear wider than it really is. While it's more apparent in the 6, it's no denying that the 3 also takes significant inspiration, even down to the sleek exterior lighting and semicircular grille which replaces the previously controversial design. Unlike others in this segment, the Mazda has a unique personality. Its styling has always been dramatic and youthful, especially with the newest generation. An interesting feature only available in the 2.5 liter Grand Touring Technology Package is a capacitor-based regenerative braking system known as iELOOP, or Intelligent Energy Loop. In addition to active grille shutters, it's able to bump the Mazda up to the 40 miles to a gallon territory. An innovative system that's able to help power various vehicle electronics. Under braking, energy is stored inside the capacitor, generated from a variable voltage alternator which can reach full charge in as little as 10 seconds of braking. There's no extra battery to go through, which also means less weight. It can power items for about a minute or so before recharging is required. The power is routed straight from the capacitor to a DC-DC current converter, then off to the features. While the power is being transferred, the alternator is decoupled from the engine, helping take some of the load off the powertrain, thus increasing fuel mileage. Mazda claims IE Loop only adds 20 pounds to the vehicle's weight, while real-world fuel economy should get a bump by 5%. The capacitor is said to last the life of the car. What engineers did with the new 3 was to take everything that made the previous vehicle fun and exciting and making it more practical and refined as well. Measures have been done to quieten the ride while adding a dose of premium build quality even for the base model. There's also a whole host of available safety features that can be had with the upper trim level including adaptive cruise, forward collision warning, cross traffic alert, brake assist, lane departure warning, and automatic adaptive bi on headlamps with LED accents. The Mazda 3 Touring comes with a set of 16 by 6.5 inch silver painted alloy wheels, wrapped in 20560 Yokohama Avid all-season tires. 16-inch steel wheels with covers are standard on the base model, while larger 18 by 7 inch wheels and 215-45 tires are included with the Grand Touring. Bringing the car to a stop is a set of 11.6 inch ventilated discs up front with single piston sliding calipers, while the rear contains a set of 10.4 inch solid discs also with single piston calipers. Coming to a stop from 60 miles an hour takes an average of 133 feet. 
The suspension is fully independent with McPherson struts up front, coilover setup, while the rear is a multi-link coilover design with stabilizer bars that provide further anti-roll resistance in both the front and rear. The back also features a dual exit exhaust muffler. Overall length is 180.3 inches with a width of 70.7 inches and a height of 57.3 inches, riding on a 106.3 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight for the sedan is around 2,900 pounds, where it's a little bit more for the hatch at 3,038. So we're going to pop the hood. The standard engine for the Mazda 3i is an all-aluminum, 2-liter dual overhead cam Atkinson Cycle 4-cylinder that produces 155 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 150 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. In addition to having four valves per cylinder, direct injection, and dual variable valve timing, the power plant with Mazda Skyactive technology achieves a lofty compression ratio of 13 to 1 and a red line of 6,500 RPM. Performance numbers include 0 to 60 times of 8.3 seconds with quarter mile times reaching 16.2 seconds at 87.3 miles an hour. Top speed maxes out at 133 miles an hour. In the Mazda 3S, you get a more powerful 2.5 liter 4 cylinder that produces 184 horsepower and 185 pound feet of torque. Performance for that engine consists of 0 to 60 times of 7.6 seconds and quarter mile times of 15.8 seconds at 89 miles an hour. Of course, the biggest benefit with the 2 liter engine is fuel economy. The Mazda 3 has a tank capacity of 13.2 gallons and you can run it on regular 87 octane fuel. With this, the EPA estimates range between 30 miles to a gallon in the city and an impressive 41 on the highway, leaving the total driving range to be approximately 541 miles depending on your driving style. Economy drops slightly for the 2.5 liter, but it's still impressive at 28 miles to a gallon in the city and 38 on the highway. When you step inside the new Mazda 3, you'll instantly recognize an all-new design language. Inspired by the BMW 3 Series, the design features a combination of bright touches, plenty of pattern material, high-gloss black trim, faux carbon fiber, and great ergonomics. Even the materials used throughout have a much more premium look and feel than before, such as the doors with plenty of angles and curves, pattern material across the upper portion, red color accent stitching, the carbon fiber trim, and all of your electric accessories located within easy reach. Mazda offers a variety of seating, from six-way manual cloth units to these six-way power-adjustable heated leatherette sports seats. Height adjustment is standard on all arrangements while leather is added in the Grand Touring trim. In addition, there's also a host of new technology including a bespoke infotainment system that's all been designed to eliminate distractions while enhancing usability. The seats definitely look cool with different patterns and the color accent stitching. They provide a nice amount of support and comfort with manual lumbar. Your seatbelt and headrests are also adjustable while side airbags are standard. The aluminum door sill plaques are optional, logoed floor mats, as well as a full manual tilt telescoping steering wheel. On the left hand side you have your fuel cap, trunk release, hood release, blind spot monitoring, traction control, as well as your tire pressure monitoring system. The dash is subtly accented in satin bright work and high gloss black veneer. Nicely finished off with an optional sunroof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. The vehicle also has a rev limiter of 4,000 RPM while it's sitting still. And we'll shut her up. Tight closing panels. 
A four-speaker audio system is standard on the entry trim levels, but this Touring features the optional Mazda Connect infotainment system, routed through a high-res 7-inch display that sits on top of the dash. In addition to smartphone app integration, it also comes with satellite and HD radio, voice to text and readback features, 911 emergency assist, and more. Not to mention a premium 9-speaker Bose audio system with Centerpoint 2 surround sound and Bose Audio Pilot. Of course, your side curtain airbags, grip handle up top, visors with little extensions that come out the side to block some more sun, and an illuminated vanity mirror. A manual dimming rearview mirror is standard, whereas in the top stack you have your controls for your sunroof, interior illumination, reading lamps, as well as a padded sunglass container up front. The sunroof is automatic opening. It has a little wind deflector that pops up. For this vehicle class, I really like what Mazda did with their infotainment system. It feels very premium, almost BMW slash Mercedes-like. In the center console, you have a little rotary dial with some shortcut keys, but the majority of all the commands is controlled via the dial in the center. You tip it up, down, left and right, push down when you select a particular option, and you can rotate it left and right. To the left-hand side is a back button, going between your different favorite radio stations, navigation, home, and your multimedia. Your volume and radio power is located to the far right. So this is your main menu, activated via the home button in the center console, where you can then scroll right and left to go between the different options, like your applications, real-time traffic updates, fuel economy, maintenance scheduling, as well as warning labels. Entertainment is all the different media options. Right now we have a CD in. If available, the album artwork will show up, even if it's on regular radio. All of the song, artist, playlist information, the different media modes including standard satellite radio, different internet radio options when syncing your smartphone, Bluetooth audio, USB, CD, auxiliary, iPod integration. You can list the tracks, repeat, shuffle, scan, rewind, fast forward, or select your track, and the audio settings the center point surround sound, as well as the audio pilot, a unique technology that Bose has that actually emits frequencies that counteract exterior road noise, trying to help make the interior quieter. While you're in the sound adjustments, you're also in the vehicle's settings. So you can click the wheel left and right to go between the different options, display, the blind spot monitoring system, clock, personalizable options, it's also Wi-Fi compatible, and system settings. Communication is your hands-free Bluetooth telephone. It'll automatically ask you to pair if you don't have one already connected. You can store contacts, call history, dial a phone from the system, send text messages, emails, and more. As far as your navigation, it's a nice high-res display. It kind of reminds me of Garmin's graphics. You can close that if you wanted to. Destination input. Navigation information traffic updates, points of interest, change in the view mode, and more detailed settings. Now off to the far right is again the system settings like I showed you a second ago. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the mobile media system available in the 2014 Mazda 3. Just like what Mazda did with the new 6, the 3 has a very upscale looking interior. The build quality is fantastic overall as far as the price point is concerned, and you have subtle touches of silver bright work, the high gloss black trim, and overall it's a very nice looking package. As we continue down the center stack, this Touring has 3 stage heated seats for both sides, as well as a fully independent dual zone electronic automatic climate control with your temperature adjustments on either side, as well as independent zone adjustments for both the driver and passenger, front and rear defrost, fan speed, and nice little digital display in the middle. The silver buttons actually have a little bit of a knurled finish, giving a little bit more of a textured feeling, and you have your single disc and dash CD player down at the bottom of the dash with a little storage tray. The high gloss black trim surrounds the controller in the middle, and a modest amount of space below. You have a removable storage tray here. It's all lined in felt. You have an SD card input, two USB ports, and a 12-volt power outlet. 
As far as the steering wheel, your cruise control is located on the right hand side, whereas your radio controls are located on the left, including hands free telephone and voice commands. Say a command. Help. Available commands are entertainment, communication, navigation, settings, applications, and favorites. Always available are go back, cancel, main menu, help, and tutorial. Say a command. Cancel. Intermittent wipers. Your lighting and turn signal. There's also a new instrument cluster with a combination of digital and analog gauges. The speedometer in the middle is analog, whereas the tachometer is an analog style, but it is digital. The right-hand side is also digital and houses your driver info system. Using the info button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you're able to go through the different options. Really a beautiful design overall. I'm going to shut her down. And check out the back seat. The back seat of the Mazda 3 is actually a lot more spacious than one might think. The optional aluminum door sill plaques. A pretty comfortable seat overall. Again, we'll talk about it a little bit more in just a second. The back seats are also folding, which I'll talk about in the trunk portion if you need more cargo space up to the front. Hopping on in the back seat is a cinch. Like I said, there is a lot more room back here than you would expect from a small sedan proportions. Overall interior space, I'm around 5'10", 5'11", or so. And with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I probably have a good three inches, give or take or so, and up top, maybe an inch and a half, two inches tops. With the Mazda 3's intended market, the back seat is actually really comfortable. I like what Mazda did in giving the back seat a little bit more of a robust, defined look. While they're not bucket seats, of course, you can sit three people back here with an extra seat belt in the middle, the sides actually have a nice amount of bolstering down below and up top, so it gives you a little bit of extra grip you typically don't see in the back seat. There's a good amount of padding down below and up top, and there's a surprisingly good amount of lower back support with extra lumbar. You do have a padded armrest in the middle here with two cup holders. Like I said, the back seats do fold down, so there's no trunk partition in the middle. All three headrests are adjustable, and you have side curtain airbags in the rear. You don't have any air registers in the center console here, but there's not a whole lot of hardware under the seat, so you can still stick your feet up under if you want to stretch out just a little bit more. Of course, up top, grip handles, coat hooks, and your reading lamps in the back. There's also a storage pocket on the back of the passenger seat, but not the driver's seat. So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Like we talked about earlier, the Mazda 3 is available in both hatchback and sedan counterparts. While the sedan may be more appealing to conservative buyers, you can get a lot more cargo flexibility with the hatch. With the sedan, you get 12.4 cubic feet of cargo space out back. Not bad for a smaller car. Its wide opening allows for easier loading of items. If needed, you can also fold down the rear seats for longer items. With the hatch, you get 20.2 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats, but with everything folded down, it swells to a massive 47.1 cubic feet. Definitely a big advantage. Underneath the cargo floor is your spare tire and changing equipment.
Unlike the driver's seat, the passenger seat is manually adjusting. The glove box also has a nice amount of space with a deep cargo well. With the Mazda 3's new youthful styling, it gives it a fresh, sporty look. Pair that with an all new interior and technology, and it also gains a big dose of premium. A great value for your dollar, the Mazda 3 will provide you with a thrifty, fun, and comfortable daily driver. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in depth look at the all-new 2014 Mazda 3 Touring. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.